Good morning, everybody. It is now 9.30 and it's my pleasure to officially welcome you to today's uh, webinar on levels. Get going with the e-learning and calculation and assessment tools. My name is Katarina Farage. I work for Prospects and I'm here today as your moderator for the event uh, as part of the team that is supporting these level outreach and engagement activities. Um, for today, we have a, a really interesting webinar planned um, in which we're going to go from now uh, 9.30 until about 11.15, uh, so almost two hours fully packed with interesting presentations, but of course also room for you to ask questions and put in comments. Um, we ask you to do this via the chat, so your microphone and your video have been turned off by default. Uh, our preferred way of communicating today with you is obviously you're going to see the presentations and we would like to collect your comments and questions uh, through the chat. So it's going to be really important that you locate where the chat is so that you can put in your questions through that. Um, and then we'll see um, to pick up as many as we can in the in the Q&A parts of the session. But rest assured that, of course, also all the other comments will reach the G environment um, uh, and also, of course, will be provided to them to um, see fit on how to pick them up. Um, also, please let uh, I want to let you know that if you have technical problems, there is an email address that you can reach out to, which is levels at echoris.com, which is also going to be put for you in the chat just in case. So please read, reach out to the colleagues in case you are observing any technical problems. You will have seen that the meeting is recorded um, in your registrations. You have given us permission to do so in case you do not want to be seen on the recording and then please refrain from uh, obviously turning on your camera but also from uh, putting in uh, any comments in the chat as we will be reading these out um, again you've already provided consent and also now by attending this meeting uh, you're also giving consent to the recording most likely the recording will be published uh, probably on the LinkedIn page, maybe somewhere else, we'll still uh, we'll evaluate what's the best option for that. Now, with all of these technicalities aside, it is again my honor to welcome you to today's webinar. Um, we have a lot of things for you at stock. Of course, an introduction to levels for those of you that are maybe not yet familiar with it very much. Uh, and then we have another set of interesting presentations. So we have very, uh, um, practical presentations on how these um, new tools, so the Levels User Manual, but also the e-learning materials and the calculation and assessment tools have been set up, but also what can you expect from them? What are they used for? We have structured the agenda, as you see on the screen, in a, uh, in a way that we have two blocks. So if we start with part one, which is embracing a whole life uh, cycle approach with help of levels indicators. There we have two presentations, one um, by Josefina Lindblom and one by Shane Donatello. And then we have after these two presentations, a short Q&A um, session again, where we take the comments that you've put into the chat and post them to the presenters. And then in uh, part number two, there is this overview of the online tools. So we have this e-learning material as a presentation um, that we will also have um, from Amodena and then later on from Manfred Fuchs, the presentation on calculation and assessment tools. Again, also there we have a Q&A and reactions from the audience. So while we're listening to the presentations, please take the time to put in your questions and comments in the chat so we can pick them up afterwards. And of course, at the end, we're going to wrap up for the day and also give a little bit of an outlook what's coming next. In your registration, you've also put forward what you expect from this event. And we've seen quite some uh, um, expectations towards really in-depth knowledge on levels. Um, we hope that you appreciate that that's a little bit difficult uh, in an hour and a half or a bit more than that um, to do. But there is a lot of information out there on the Levels website, uh, which you will also be uh, getting indicated in the presentations. And of course, there's also, please don't forget, the Levels help desk. So you can put any other questions that you might have towards this help desk. And from there, you will get answers, usually uh, um, just in, in a 
couple of days, a maximum of 30, depending on how complex your question is, of course. And this, it is open in six languages, so you can also even pose your, lang uh, your question in one of these. So please be aware that today is a bit of an overview and getting, getting to know um, levels, but of course also getting to know the tools. You have the opportunity to have, ask questions, but if they are very detailed, very specific, we want to uh, direct you towards the help desk and the website. Now, that's a lot of information for me. Um, I would like to warm up the crowd today a bit. So we have a little bit of a poll question here. You can access the poll in two ways. One is that you'll follow the link, which is going to be posted in the chat as we speak. And the other way, if you are more of your mobile mobile phone user, you get your mobile phone out and scan the little QR code that is in the top left corner of the slide that you have in front of you. So please use one of the two ways. So either you're following the link or you're going to go using the QR code. And then we have a question for you, which is also giving us a little bit of a feeling of the audience today. Because as you can see, it's already quite a quite a big group. So it's going to be interesting to know what is your familiarity level with levels. So how familiar with levels are you? There are a couple of options ranging from I'm completely new to levels. Again, if that's the case, please put it in. It really helps us to understand where you're standing. Obviously, there are other options. You can choose more than one in this case, right? So it's a multiple choice option. Um, and you have others like I've attended meetings, I've seen the website, I've read the manuals, so many different options. I'll shut up for a few seconds to give you a bit of time to answer the question. I see that about half the people have completed the poll. So just a few more seconds for everybody else to get to the poll and then obviously put in the answer options. I still see movement, which means people are still responding. I'm just going to give you a um, half a minute more. And then we will close the poll and have a quick look. I see. I see we have a front runner. I'm not sure if you can already see the results, but I guess so. Um, there seems to be a clear indication and the website. It's a very good resource to start with when you're wanting to know more about levels. So I'll give it to that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, final votes, 4, Three, two, one. Thank you. I would close the poll if, if that's OK um, with my colleagues. Thank you very much. So it really looks like um, the website is the first go to place for most of you. So there are people that have uh, um, consulted that already. Uh, more than half of the participants of today. So that's really good. Um, we also have quite some newcomers um to levels which is great because today you're going <clears throat> to get that introduction to levels and the tools that we were mentioning earlier um and there are a few that are familiar with some of the um communication or outreach tools like the events that already to, uh, taken place pre uh, previously the manuals the newsletter the linkedin page which is great to see um that you found these and that you're that you also consulted these uh, in the past very good that looks like we have a have an interesting uh, group of of people together. Some new, some already a little bit experienced, but I'm sure you're all very eager to learn what's uh, in there for you today. As said earlier, we're going to start um, with an introduction presentation. Um, in the first part, which is entitled Embracing a Whole Life Cycle Approach with help from the levels indicators and the first Presenter today is Josephine Lindblom, who is uh, a policy officer for uh, sustainable buildings at DG Environment. Josephina, it's nice to see you again, uh, and I'm really looking forward to your presentation on levels because for all of you that don't know Josephina yet, I think if the info 
formal title maybe is Mrs. Levels, but um, in that case, of course, we're really interested to hear from you, um, Josefina. What is Levels about uh, and how can people in this uh, meeting really relate to it? Thank you so much, Katharina. Uh, it's great to be here and it's great to see so many also newcomers, though I'm very happy to to also have, of course, people who have been following levels or involved in levels for, for quite some time as well. But I would like to say a particular welcome to those who are who are new to levels. And I'm quite excited about this webinar as well. Uh, maybe that's something that we always say when we put on a on an event, but uh, this is something that I would like would have liked to do for a long time, and I'm I'm really excited about this one. I hope you will like it. Um, I want to start by giving you a brief overview of what Levels is, and also um, present a part of the website so that you know where to to find what a little bit and set the context for what will be coming later on with the other colleagues. So Levels is indeed a common language. That's how it was conceived from the beginning to 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 create a basis for what a sustainable building would be and how you assess it. So it provides a methodology to assess and report on sustainability performance of buildings. It, it, we have done it so that it focuses on residential buildings and offices, both of them. And very importantly, it's not only for new buildings, but also for renovation projects. So this is what Levels covers. Uh, we've made sure that um, the framework with its different indicators, will, which I will show you in a little bit, is really based on best practice industry standards. That has been important when we develop Levels. And also, uh, if perhaps even more important, is that when we developed the indicators over a number of years, uh, it was also tested by the sector um, the development phase as well was done in very close collaboration with lots and lots of building professionals. And so I think that um, immediate collaboration was or is really a very important part of the success of Levels uh, so far. Um, that was a great experience and we now see how it is being embraced. What was very important for us when we developed Levels as well was that we wanted to provide an entry level tool for the mainstream market. So we provide the methodology or Levels provides the methodology to assess and report, but it does so in, um, I would say, a step by step uh, way or approach. Um, you choose what it is within the Levels framework that you want to focus on and you choose at what level? I will come to that later, but really it means when in the process do you do it and at what depth do you do it? We provide different ways of, of working with that, so it really should give you as much flexibility as possible because we want to be able to provide something which is really applicable also for those who are new to uh, thinking about um, assessment over the life cycle, full life cycle of a building. At the same time, as it is supposed to be really useful for those who are uh, familiar with it as well. So the next slide then will show you the different areas that we cover with levels. Now in the levels lingo, we call these six different areas, actually the macro objectives, six macro objectives. And under those macro objectives, we have a set of indicators. So. What we are looking at with levels is the whole life carbon. So that means greenhouse gas emissions throughout the full life cycle of the building. We also look at resource efficient and material flows. So that's where circularity comes in, uh, how you manage your waste, etc. We have efficient use of water in the use phase of the building. There we have the first three ones which are really related to, to resource use in one way or the other. Um, energy, material and water, and so hence have a very direct impact on the environment. But then we have three uh, other areas or, or macro objectives, as I said, which are more linked to the quality and value of the building. So that covers health and comfort, adaptation and resilience to climate change. And the last one then is life cycle cost and value. This is what we have. These are the areas that we're working with. So the next slide then will show you uh, how the indicators are, are spread out. You see the second column here is the macro objectives again. So 
those six ones that I just showed you um, are listed there. And to the right of those, you see which indicators are being used to describe this macro objective. I will not go through the different indicators in detail. You will find them on the Levels website and you can dig in, into them more. And I will also show you uh, how you can learn more about the, the indicators. Get, first, get an overview and then dig in deeper if you want to. But you will see that we have from one to actually four indicators for the different macro objectives. Uh, all in all, there are 16 of the indicators, which should give you a good overview of your building performance throughout the full life cycle of the building. So for the next slide, uh, I also want to uh, show you how you can work with this levels framework at three different levels. So the first level, uh, it is at the early concept stage where you work with the indicators in a qualitative way. Uh, so this gives a very good uh, support to the design team when they have early discussions with the client. Uh, if they want to be just to steer that uh, steer that conversation uh, regarding what should the focus be in terms of sustainability for this particular project, then you can work with it with the indicators at um, at level one. Then you have uh, the possibility to work with the indicators in a quantitative way. And that you would typically do then at the design and construction stage. Uh, so you can work with the same indicators uh, as you did in level one or others for that matter, uh, but you will be doing it then with, with actual numbers. The third level, the last level is provided for a number of the indicators as well. And that is when the project is over and a uh, building project is over, You've had the handover to the client and you, as in some cases of the indicators, you're actually monitoring the performance uh, throughout typically the first year of, of occupancy. So then you will actually check how the, the, the building performs in real life and how it can, compares also with what you planned earlier on if you were using the indicator at level two or even level one. So. Uh, you choose the indicators that you want to work with from this matrix that I just showed you. Uh, you choose for each of the indicators which level you want to work with, if you want to use from level one, level two and level three, or if you want to, to, to use only one of them. And that doesn't, you don't have to start with level one to be able to go further either. These different levels are there to give you maximum flexibility. Uh, and then for the next slide, I, I want to now show you the website, uh, or part of the website, I should say, because there's much more to discover than what I will show you now. But the, the general thing that you will find there, which we want to focus on today, is that we have the step-by-step -step introduction, which is, I would say, really the first thing to have a look at to get a good feeling of what Levels is all about. And that is, uh, I will take you through part of that today. Then we have the e-learning and the calculator which will uh, be presented by Almudena and Manfred uh, here later on. And of course, we have the Levels user manuals, which are really the backbone of Levels. That's what we uh, developed first. Uh, Shane will be presenting that directly after me. So it's really based on those user manuals, which was the outcome of this process and this collaboration with, with building professionals. That is really what Levels is all about. And then we have done different different things, uh, website, e-learning, et cetera, to try to get it, um, uh, to give you a chance to access it uh, in, in, in an easier way to start with uh, before you actually get going. But so we will cover all those things today, but you can also find them, of course, um, you can access them on our website. So next, next slide, please. So if you if we had zoomed in on this first uh, web page, uh, you will find among other icons these three ones, which is all about get to know levels. So we have the let's meet levels, which is the introduction, which I will uh, go on with um, here. We have the e-learning and the calculation tool. Those are the online tools which you can access from the levels levels web page, and of course those dear user manuals, the backbone of levels, you will find them under the, um, the heading start using levels. Now, if we go to, uh, I'm gonna take care of the let's meet levels, the introduction here, and then I will leave the rest for colleagues. So next slide, please. 
I'm coming back to this uh, the same um, the same uh, matrix or table that I showed you before. Uh, it's exactly the same with the macro objectives and the indicators. And I'm going to pick one of the indicators today, or actually we will all pick one of the indicators today to illustrate, exemplify what it is that you can find on the web page or what it is that you can do with the different tools and so on. So we will be focusing or zooming in on the indicator 3.1, which is uh, the use stage uh, water consumption indicator. And that's why we have this little icon with case study on top so that you're aware of that. Now we are, we are focusing on one of the indicators here. So having said that, uh, what happens if you go on the introduction introduction page uh, on, on the levels, let's meet levels the website. Um, you will see that if we come to the next slide. You will actually have all the different indicators. I just put some of them here, but you will find all the different indicators and you can expand on any of the indicators that you're interested in. So if I then want to check out indicator 3.1, uh, we will do that and we will come to brief explanations on all the different three levels, as I mentioned. So this is now an explanation which you will find on the on the website. It first sets out the level one for this particular indicator, which we have chosen then. So remember, the level one is the qualitative assessment and reporting on the concepts, really. So this level is for those users who would like to be aware of, in this case, five highly relevant aspects for reducing and optimizing use stage water consumption. It is for those who would like to describe how these aspects have been considered or not during discussions and decision making at the dis concept design stage. So in this case, we will be working with a checklist to inform on water efficient design concepts. Uh, it's very common for the level one to work with with different kinds of checklists, actually. If we then then if we then go on to look at level two for the same uh, indicator, then it is an intermediate level, as I said, where you start to work with a quantitative assessment. So this level is for those users who would like to estimate the per person water consumption in the building as a function of the water consuming devices that you will have in appliances and also, of course, the irrigated areas. And you do that via a, a calculator. It is also for those who would like to minimize the potable water consumption by the specification of more efficient devices and appliances and by rainwater harvesting and or uh, grey water reuse. So here you see the difference in levels. Um, I have only taken the water indicator here as an example as to illustrate what these different levels actually mean in practice. But here you see directly the difference. In level two, you will be working with numbers, so not with checklists anymore. And then if we go to the next slide, which is then the level three, which is about monitoring and the surveying of activity. So here we have a, a, a finalized building up and running. So this level is for those users who would like to take measures of actual water consumption over the course of, of one year, estimate occupation rates of the building. So in order to be able to put that in context with the consumption and compare estimates with, with measures. So here you have something which is really related to what's what's happening in real life. And of course, you can also compare that with what you did earlier on at level two and even level one. So this is uh, these different levels, as you see, work in different ways and the same thinking behind the three levels you will find for, for the different indicators. OK, uh, then we go on to the next slide. I also mentioned uh, that we have on this on the first page of the levels uh, web page, you will also have a direct link so that you can access the e-learning and the calculator tool. So you will find those there immediately. They are accessible from there and we will have colleagues now presenting them to you. But so once you have checked the, the introduction of levels, which I showed you, and there's more of introduction as well, and you have perhaps done the e-learning, so you've understood a bit what it is about, and you've been able to follow very nice case studies, which the e-learning provides as well, and which you will see more of, and you're aware of where you find the, the calculator. I also uh, encourage you, once you have these basics, to look at the user manuals uh, and start using those in your working environment. And if I could just have the next slide then, 
there is um, on the very first page of the of the levels website, you have also, if you remember the start using levels, that is where you will find the different user manuals. And there you can get the, the real, the, the, the dense methodology of how to go about. So having said all that, I hope that gave you a, a quick introduction and you understand what is available on the website. And now colleagues will dig deeper into those different aspects. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Josefina, for that introduction to Levels. Um, but not only that, but also showing us how to access the different resources that are already available and uh, ready to be used, right? Um, there will be more information, as Josefina has said, on these uh, in the next couple of presentations, but it's great to have this uh, more bird's eye view on what is out there and how to access it. Um, before we do that, um, there are some exciting new materials because maybe um, bringing it across earlier was uh, my fault. These materials uh, like the user manuals, but of course also the, the other tools that are not brand new, right? So they have been around for a while, but this is uh, one of the first opportunities to give you a bit more meat um, to that uh, and more information and also for you to get uh, to ask questions. But there are some really brand new things, um, which is... Uh, also going to be shown to you on the slide. Uh, there is a new video um, that is going to be launched um, in which we will also have um, more information, of course, for you on how what is levels and how to use it. Um, and then there is also um, two new publications uh, which will be shared uh, in um, the near future. And especially for you as participants of today, there is going to be an email with the links uh, after the event, um, we still have to uh, put the final uh, dots on the eye, but you will receive them as soon as possible within the coming days. Um, we, of course, encourage you to also spread the word. So if you know of people that would be interested in getting this new material, the video and the publications, then please um, spread it. Um, spread it via your channel, spread it to colleagues so that um, more people are made aware of these new materials. Now, um, there you also see now the slide uh, where we indicate the video um, that will be um, shared with you. The link to the video will be shared with you soon. And then on the next slide, you also have these two new publications. We have fact sheets format, um, and you will also get a link to those in the email that I was just announcing. Great, thank you so much. And thank you also for all the people that are now putting comments in the chat. Please continue to do so. Um, uh, again, as we said, we're not going to have the function of raising your hand, but if you have questions, if you have comments, please put them in into the chat and we'll pick them up in our Q&A session. As um, I'm going to look into the next one, uh, we're having a presentation from Shane Donatello. Shane, I'm hoping you're with us. Um, we've heard already um, from uh, Josefina about the user manuals, but of course you are going to give us more details on that, um, what they are and what, how they can be useful. So Shane, I would love to give the floor to you. And again, for everybody else, if you have questions to Shane, but also still to Josefina, put them in the chat. Shane, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katharina. So, so yes, I want to talk to you today about this so-called backbone of, of levels. And uh, it really does, in terms of content, that is where all the key content is. Um, the e-learning material helps you understand better or prepare for understanding that content. And the, the online calculator basically allows you to uh, apply uh, the number side, the data side of, of, of that content in terms of uh, reporting on indicators. So if we just start with this, the next slide, um, which wasn't that, <laughs> yeah, this one. So um, where to find these user manuals? So um, the Levels website that you saw at the end of Josefina's presentation has a link to, uh, that takes you to the JRC website, uh, the specific URL is at the bottom of this slide. And you can see here on the documents tab of, of this JRC website, you can see uh, what is a long list of, of documents and they're ordered in terms of 
uh, the so-called essential background reading, which are the first two user manuals, which are horizontal uh, to be read in general for anyone interested in levels. So these two user manuals come first, and then the user manuals are ordered um, by macro objective. So we start with macro objective one, the user manuals for each of the indicators there, uh, then we move to macro objective two and, and so on, all the way to macro objective uh, six. So if we go to the next slide, then you can see another way of showing this is uh, it's really, we've, we've called them three different types of user manuals. So the first one is this horizontal one. It's an introduction to levels. Uh, why did we create this framework? Who is it aimed at and, and what should it be used for in general? Uh, it's about a 20 to 30 page document. Then there's this user manual two, which again is the horizontal document as well. It's for taking a step further to actually say how can you use levels in a, a real building project? So it goes into the, the what do you need to do exactly in, in a little bit more detail, providing tips on how you should, what kind of, how you should describe the building before you start so that you have all the information that would be relevant for the more specific indicators. And then there's this much broader user manual three, uh, which is split into uh, a number of different documents. I think it's 16 in total, so there's one for each indicator. And basically these are kind of standalone files that can be read independently. And you basically just read the ones that are, uh, correspond to the indicators that you're interested in. So uh, inside those user manuals is where the real, um, you know, what do I need to do, the step-by-step -step instructions and more kind of guidance uh, might be needed. Uh, you know, the hands-on stuff uh, is in user manual three. And just to add here that some of these indicators have complementary files. Um, so for example, Excel tools and, and so on. But I'll explain that a little bit more in the next slide. So, well, okay, before I get to the complementary tools, this next slide um, is just a breakdown of, of the structure of those uh, user manual three uh, user manuals. So each one starts with a common element. So it explains the overall structure of how all these documents come together um, and how the user manual is intended to work. So that's kind of common for all user manuals. So it's like copy paste. Then at the beginning uh, for each indicator, there are a table of specific terms and definitions of relevance to that indicator. Then all of them have an introductory briefing where we explain why should you measure with this indicator? What exactly does it measure? What stages of a project can you uh, do this? Uh, what unit of measurement should be used? And then uh, things on the system boundary and scope and uh, basically references to any underlying calculation methods in, in EN standards or ISO standards. Uh, then um, the next section in these indicator specific user manuals, sorry, I'm still on the last slide. It uh, goes through, um, explains level one instructions. And uh, in this section, you have subsections that say, um, you know, what is the point of this level? Uh, step by step instructions of what you need to do, uh, who should be involved and when. And in level one, it has this unique feature of taking you towards a checklist of relevant de design concepts. And then there's some examples of how you could report on such a checklist in a real building project for each indicator. Uh, and then you move to level two and level three instructions in the user manual. And again, a lot of these subsections are common to level one, but the more specific parts is uh, what do you need to do to make an assessment? Because that section is really, uh, you're doing calculations, you're doing estimations, so you really need to do more uh, quantitative things. Uh, so you need more detail there. And also because it's quantitative, you need this, how do we ensure comparability of results and the reporting format has to also be defined. Uh, and then all of these indicator specific user manuals also have a further guidance section where wherever we felt some of the steps need more explanation or more background, we, we go into more detail in these further guidance sections. So that's just an overview of the structure of these uh, user manuals. So on the next slide, um, on the next slide I can explain uh, how the complementary files work. So as I mentioned, some of these indicators have complementary files. It's basically these five that are listed here. And uh, the first one is uh, for the life cycle global warming potential is like a checklist of uh, 
Okay, so an indicative checklist, so a non-exhaustive non list of uh, LCA software and databases that we've checked and found to be compatible with the underlying EN standards and therefore uh, compatible with uh, levels reporting on lifecycle carbon. Uh, then also you can see the other indicators, this bill of materials in 2.1, construction and demolition waste 2.2, Design for the construction, indicator 2.4, and the water use, 3.1. All of these are linked to some sort of Excel type format that is mirrored on, on the CAT online tool, which allows you to take basic input data and compute it and calculate uh, final results in the units of measurement that, that we define. Uh, and all of these complementary files are also on that same GRC web page that I mentioned at the beginning. So on the next slide, um, I, I, dive, I dive into indicator 3.1, uh, which is about use stage water consumption. So the first question you have is why should I look at this? And there's really several reasons. First of which is um, we don't we don't want to contribute to water scarcity uh, in the regional environment. Uh, but also, all the water that comes through the portable mains has been abstracted. It's been treated with chemicals. It's been pumped to our house or our building. And that all has a carbon footprint of its own. And then the very easy one to consider is the economic cost of that supplied water. It's a direct cost uh, for all building users. And uh, so, uh, and, and furthermore, when we talk about hot water, you have this added uh, cost of the energy used to heat water. So there's some very clear reasons of why use stage water consumption should be easy, uh, should be of interest to, to building owners and occupants. So the next slide. We just take a look at um, how we try and estimate uh, these uh, consumptions for a building. And there's really two things you have to look at. So there's um, you want to get to this result of uh, meters cubed per person per year. So you have to look first of all at the occupant specific consumption. So this is things that uh, you know are directly related to the number of occupants in a building. So how many times is the toilet flushed? How many cycles of washing machine? Uh, how long is the tap open for? How long is the shower running? These uh, calculations would be, for, for example, we take one of those devices, the toilet, the example would be how many litres per flush for the toilet, which is specific to the, the device. And then the occupant usage factor would be how many flushes per person per day. And that will take you to a result of litres per person per day. And you do the same for the other occupant specific devices and you can end up converting that number into meters cubed per person per year, uh, multiplying by the, the building use intensity of how many days the, the building is actually occupied. Then um, you can also look at the occupant independent consumption. So this is things like irrigating the, the garden or cleaning the windows or the floors. Uh, it doesn't matter how many people are in the building, you're going to consume uh, a quantity based on the surface area involved and a specific uh, liters per meter squared per day factor. So, so these are the two different things that need to be factored into the calculation. So on the next slide, the just to show a kind of flow diagram of this, um, the idea is you, know, you have this portable water coming in, it's going through these devices and applications, and it's coming out as, as, as wastewater in general. Maybe not the irrigation, but everything else kind of goes into a sewer pipe. So first thing is to look at improving the efficiency. So that, that blue line coming in, I think on the next slide, or yeah, on the next slide, um, you want that blue line coming in to be uh, have a lower flow. And then the user manual and to get further guidance, we actually looked at the EU the European water label and we looked at the catalogue there of different products and we got this idea of a range of um, specific consumption rates for different, some of the main different devices. So the water closet, that's the toilet, uh, shower handsets and, and taps. And I think we, we zoom in, if you zoom in on the last um, column, uh, you can see highlighted um, the general improvement potential so you can see, just looking at the middle range of, of performances on the catalog, you can see there's a factor of two, a factor of three improvement. It's easily possible. So on the next slide, um, you can see it's not only as simple as efficiency, you can also take advantage of rainwater on site as an alternative and complementary supply to the potable water. 
Uh, with minimal treatment, that can be used for irrigation and toilets, but potentially also with some more detail, uh, advanced treatment, it could be used for other applications. And it's not just rainwater. On the next slide, you can see we can also take grey water. And um, this would involve taking that water that's been used in the shower or in the, the, the sinks, taking it to an on-site storage tank and then using it directly with some filtration uh, for irrigation and toilet flushing. So, so really, if we go to the next slide, you, when you, you consider all of these uh, factors and variables, how they can all be combined, uh, what the assumptions can be, uh, you can also play with those, what's the rainfall data, where does the green water go exactly, uh, all these things. In order to, to ensure consistent results, we really need a standard philosophy, which is why we, we took the trouble to, to go into more detail on this on the user manual. And also a standard calculation just to make sure everyone does it the same way. Uh, so we have created this Excel complementary calculator, which is also mirrored on the online CAT platform. And I think next slide, if there is one. Yeah, and then it was moving to the question and answers. Thank you so, Thank you so much, Shane, Shane, for that presentation. Um, you've given gotten quite some uh, credit already in the chat for uh, for the presentation, but also of course for the tool. <clears throat> where people really appreciate that it is that detailed um, and that there is so much useful information and guidance in there. So thank you, Shane, for walking us through and also for specifically looking at the Syndicator 3.1, which is going to be our red red line, our red sorry, a red thread um, throughout today's webinar because we want to show you. Um, on a specific indicator, how the user manual, but also, of course, the tools later on, how they can be helpful. So if I could ask uh, Josefina as well to turn back her camera on, um, because it would just uh, take a few minutes. We have a few minutes for a couple of questions that came in um, also um, through the chat. Um, maybe a first one to you, um, uh, Josefina. Um, there was a question uh, from Julie who asked um, to understand how levels is linked to the EU taxonomy. Yeah, I saw that one. Thanks for all the good questions. Uh, uh, I think in general there were quite some questions actually on how levels links to different kinds of policy work. I saw there were also uh, some questions which asked about the construction product regulation and I think there was something else as well. So I take the opportunity to, to take them together uh, a bit. Um, levels was finalized, uh, we, we um, published it by the end of 2020. It was at the same time as the renovation wave communication, if anyone uh, followed that, that development. Uh, so that meant that last year in 2021, we were able to use levels as a basis um, for bringing in life cycle thinking and circularity into different kinds of, of policies, which are linked to buildings then. Um, the first one was actually the first policy development which made use of levels, referred to levels. Um, it was actually the sustainable finance and the taxonomy work then, which was, was the question here. So in the first delegated act on the taxonomy, sustainable finance taxonomy, sorry, technical language here, uh, uh, that one is for uh, climate change uh, mitigation uh, and adaptation. And there, uh, there is the requirement that if you want your building, your new building project or investment to be defined, classified as sustainable, you should, if you have a large building, you should assess and report on the whole life carbon, which is one of those indicators that we showed you, uh, I showed you earlier. Uh, it's more specifically the one which is called 1.2. That one uh, is then sort of a requirement to assess and report on uh, to be able to uh, to have your large new building defined as as a sustainable investment. So that's great. Then we had later on in the year we had the energy efficiency directive and the energy performance of buildings directive, which both uh, include for the first time. Um, either recommendations in the case of the Energy Efficiency Directive or actually requirements from the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. Um, uh, uh, they require the, the reporting, assessment and reporting again uh, of whole life carbon in new buildings. Those last two ones, I should say, are proposals from the Commission, so they are currently being um, negotiated with the Parliament and, and the different member states. But also in, in the case of the Construction Product Regulation, 
uh, which uh, where the Commission's proposal was adopted very recently. There is a clear link to two levels. Um, the colleagues who were preparing or developing that piece of legislation have looked carefully at the levels indicators um, so that because, of course, if we want to be able to assess the building, we need information on the product level. And so this this regulation on products uh, takes care of that as well. Thank you, Josefina, and also thank you for you know putting into the context because indeed there's been quite some questions in the chat that were going in a similar direction. And thank you for looking at it um, from a more global policy perspective and the link to levels on that. Um, Shane, uh, next to um, maybe the, the the praise that you've got and also for 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 the details that you provided. Um, I, I was just wondering, um, is there going to be a revision of these user manuals at some point? Or how do you go about it? Yeah, it's not ultimately up to me, but the the thing is, the, the current state is if there's like small mistakes or uh, anything, you know, that needs to be fixed quite obvious for obvious reasons, we can do that, you know, at, on a uh, kind of piecemeal basis. Uh, but the problem is, all of these user manuals have been translated to different languages of, of uh, the European Commission. The horizontal manuals, all languages, and the indicator specific manuals, five different languages. So we don't want to make too many changes right now uh, because of the knock on effects of having to update the translated versions as well. But at some point, levels will have to be revised because the whole policy landscape continues to shift and levels has to remain up to date and, and relevant. So it's based on EU policy to a large extent and it has to somehow follow and, and uh, com complement this policy. So at some periodically, I imagine it will have to be updated, but there's no specific date in mind as far as I'm aware. Can I just say there that uh, uh, of course, the levels is, is to a large extent taking existing policy into account. But as I also mentioned before, levels is driving policy. So, so that's very nice. But we have to, to remain, stay relevant, of course, for that. Now, the main reason for, for not making any major changes to levels at this point in time, uh, I would say, is because we want this material to be stable for some time so that people can actually get used to it, uh, familiarize themselves with it. We don't want people to make an effort in going into it and, and start using it. And then after one year, we say, well, now we're going to change it a bit. So we, we want to keep it uh, as much as it is possible. Of course, if there are mistakes, please let us know. But we think we have checked it carefully enough. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but if there are so, please let us know. But otherwise, we would like to keep it for some time to really to really have something stable to work on. Yes, and I think that's uh, especially looking into people planning um, and implementing uh, projects. I think uh, is if, let's say the environment changes, uh, that's including policy, but of course also some some other points. So I think that stability is probably very much appreciated from uh, from a practical point. So thank you for pointing that out, uh, Josefina, and thank you, Shane, as well um, for your presentation again, both of you. Uh, and for being available for questions. There are a few more in the chat. So if you think you have the opportunity, uh, Josephine and Shane, to have a look at the chat and maybe directly respond to participants, that's great. Um, of course, we also understand that you want to listen to the next presentations because they're going to be very interesting as well. But uh, just in case um, you feel that you have the capacity to get to back to participants in the chat, that would be very much appreciated. We're closing a part one of today's webinar and moving on to part two, which is now an overview of the online tools for the application of levels. So as said earlier, these tools have been around for a couple of months now, uh, but it is, of course, interesting in this webinar to hear from the people that were um, at the forefront of developing them and putting them to place what they can do, what they can do for you, what, what is covered and also to yet again show you the details. So walking through again on indicator 3.1, uh, giving you examples going into the details. Well, starting uh, with a presentation by Almudena Rodero, who is a senior environmental consultant at Arup, and she's going to give us an insight into the e-learning materials that are available around levels. Uh, Almudena, how can we use them and what do we use them for? Great. Thanks a lot for uh, letting me participate in this interesting webinar. Uh, during this session, I am going to present a journey through the tool 
that will help you to understand an overview of the structure and how it works. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, Level C Learning provides a simple entry point to embed sustainability at the heart of uh, residential and as well to office buildings, as Josefina says uh, before, through a series of easy to navigate modules. To ensure a successful learning experience, uh, the Level C Learning was tested, incorporating feedback from a range of geographically diverse uh, range of prof professionals across the continent before going live. Um, as uh, I um, you go to the next slide, please. I would like to show you uh, during this session like a journey uh, through the through the e-learning uh, as uh, Josefina has already inspired us uh, showing us uh, the basics of levels through the levels web page. Uh, so this is like uh, the first step in, in a learning uh, path. If you are not familiar, get into the to the levels web site and see uh, all the documentation that is there that is very useful and then discover discover with uh, this e-learning that i'm going to to show you in the next um in the coming minutes uh, and then uh, to learn explore and check your knowledge this is the example that we have followed during this webinar uh, the example of the indicator 3.1 uh, so i'm going to go through this this learning uh, journey this of the tool that you are uh, viewing in the image but i'm going to do it live so i'm going to share my screen wait a moment let me know if this is working. Yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. Perfect. Like like Josefina says, that there are different ways of uh, getting in 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 the in the e-learning. One is directly through the web page. You click here, and you will see this direct link that goes to directly to the course. It is important to understand that you will need a login uh, for the European Commission. You have um, some very easy web page from the European Commission to create a login. And another way to, to go to the course is directly go to the EU Academy, which is the um, learning uh, portal from the European Commission, where you can find different types of uh, learning content. You can explore by topic and the levels will be in this site and also in education and capacity building, but also you can click uh, here to search uh, levels or energy or different uh, tags that are related to levels and goes to the course. And also in this main web page, you can see as a new course the, the levels. OK, so I'm going uh, once you are in this page uh, where there is an introduction of what is the course details, the target audience, the learning objectives, and also mm, there is a little explanation of the different modules that are available, you need to click on resume. Uh, I am already logging, so um, if you click on, I think that you are going to click on enroll and then ask for the login. And when you log in, uh, will appear this resume button. When you click in the re this resume button, you will see uh, the, the different modules. The one, the first uh, topic is the learning journey. The learning journey is this document available here. Well, you click here and there is an, an explanation where, where you can find the document. Here is the document. I have already opened this. This is a recommended learning journey because as Josefina says in her presentation, Levels is a very flexible uh, tool that you can um, pick and choose uh, which is the, the main topics that you are interested in integrated in your building. But also uh, we have um, developed this learning journey according to different priorities. Maybe if your priorities is related to circularity, you click on here and you will have like some recommended indicators uh, within the different macro objectives that you can choose for this topic. But this is a, a recommendation you can uh, pick and choose whatever you prefer. Okay. 
Then uh, there is an introduction module um, where there is information, uh, general information from levels, and also uh, related to the user manuals that Shane said uh, that are transversal, the user manual one and user manual two. Uh, this is syn synthesized in this um, in this first module, but I'm going to show you as an example the uh, module for the macro objective three. When you click on this. You can see this link for the module three. You click on module three, then you click on enter. And it would appear this initial screen. All the modules have the same structure um, and uh, it is very easy to navigate. In this case, uh, there is only one indicator that the, in other cases you will see different indicators and you choose the one that you want to, to learn about. Uh, as I have followed all the learning course, it appears in, in I don't know how to say it, in a whole color but it would uh, appear blank when you start in, in this beginning. And then you, you have here the navigation content with the different structure of the, of the module. This is uh, all the modules are structured the same as I mentioned. Uh, the first is an, is an introduction. Uh, well, I'm going to show you this navigation, but also in the um, there is a help menu that explains which are the meanings of the different buttons. Then you can click on always on home to go to the beginning and choose for another indicator. In the first uh, screen is the introduction where there is an explanation, a synthesized explanation of the uh, aim of the indicator. Uh, in this case of the of the water, understanding the main source of, of water consumption, as Shane has already explained about this uh, indicator. In the next uh, screen, you can see how do you need to start with this indicator. There is a uh, links to the user manuals. This um, manual is specific to this indicator, the, also to the calculator and different reporting uh, formats. So you can see everything here. Uh, it is not necessarily that you read in advance the user manuals and the objective of the learning uh, is to to have a synthesized uh, overview of the different indicators and and information there and then if you want to go deeper you can always have at the same time the the user manuals to check for more information then we have already we have also include what do you need to work with this indicator a normal uh, project things like the um, narrative for the plant species or maybe the uh, design related water consuming devices or manufacturing information these kind of things that would help you to integrate the different concepts included in this indicator another um, a screen is what do we measure the this indicator in this case, which is the unit of measurement, the uh, cubic meters per occupant per year. Then who is responsible depending on the um, on the level, on the stage of the project where you are uh, or the level of detail that you want to integrate in your project, you can see uh, which are the recommended responsibles uh, that are part of this of this stage. You can check uh, here. And then and the next slides are related to the process, the different steps, uh, depending on the level that you want to integrate this indicator, uh, which are the steps to follow. For example, this is the, the checklist that the Josephine and, and Shane mentioned about the, the water con efficient consumption. Here are the main topics where there are more explanations of the different um, uh, water concepts. And then um, at the end of this level, we have always include an example of the reporting. This uh, reporting could be done by the CAD tool that Manfred is going to explain in the next um, uh, presentations. But this is an example of how you can complete the different water. These are the water uh, design concepts and how you can integrate uh, the different these concepts in inside of the building and some recommendation of test that could be included in the reporting. Um, then would be the, the level two and then some slides for also the level three for the different steps and how to incorporate the things in the water calculator.
Then we have included uh, the reference standards, the main uh, standards that are uh, mentioned in the manuals. So you can check easily which are the, the connections with, with different international or European recognized uh, standards. Then we have a glossary with different terms um, and, and concepts related to the indicator. And then some self-check assessment, uh, self-check knowledge questionnaire, where you click uh, if you have understand uh, the, um, the objectives of this indicator. At the end of each um, indicator within each module, we have incorporated the K a case study. This is a um, this is the same like a pilot building. We have taken an office in, in Madrid um, uh, as an example, and we have gone through the different indicators and include a case study for all the levels in this uh, e-learning. So you can see um, in a real uh, life or real implementation in your projects, how you can incorporate the different criteria for the level one, for the level two, and with, with some numbers also for this example, and as building the level three. <coughs> Sorry. And then we have incorporated also the useful tips related to what type of building you could be. <coughs> And then some uh, related indicator tips that in our experience uh, with sustainability integration since more than 15 years and uh, that we have seen that is important to take into account really in relation to this <coughs> water uh, indicator in this case. And also we have included some connections with other indicators that could be related and so you maybe you are in the beginning, just focusing in one indicator, but then you can see that it's related and you can check other uh, concepts and sustainability issues that you can also incorporate in your project. So this is my the overall view of the, of the course. Uh, in addition, the, the learning course would show you when is your when you are completing the different modules. As I have completed all, it appears 100%. Um, but you can, this is not something that you can uh, do uh, during during one week or, or something. Um, you can pick and choose uh, whenever you prefer to start the learning and and which is the topic that you want to learn in, in each case. We have estimated that this is um, like six and a half hours, more or less, of, of duration of the course. And then there are, if you want to get deeper and deeper, you have also the user manuals and, and also the CAD tool to integrate all these things. Thank you, Amadena, um, for this uh, wonderful presentation and for going live uh, through the materials, which is, of course, a great uh, a great opportunity for our participants here today to see how it looks like if they would go on it. Um, obviously, maybe not yet with 100% completion rate, but um, at least, of course, they would see how how they can access this, where would they need to go uh, and things like that. So thank you for that for the moment. We'll get back to you with questions uh, after the second part of the presentation, because you've already referred to a couple of a uh, couple of times to um, to the cat, um, which we're going to have as a presentation as well. So next to the e-learning material or the e-learning environment that uh, Almudena was uh, presenting just now, there is also the calculation and assessment tool, the cat. Not the cat, the cat, but uh, we're going to have a presentation on this one. Again, also making this um, red threat with the indicator 3.1 on um, the water part uh, uh, of the assessment. And we have a presentation by Manfred Fuchs, who is policy senior assistant at the European Commission of DG Grow. Manfred, it's nice to see you again. And uh, it would be really lovely if you could walk us as uh, nicely as the other presentations, of course, on what is the calculation and assessment tool and what can I use it for? OK, that's setting the level a little bit high, but I try to reach the same quality. Um, the first thing is, in particular, when you look at the previous um, presentations, in theory, everybody could work already with the tools at hand here. So um, uh, using uh, the manuals from the GRC, 
going into uh, the e-learning um, uh, elements to get a better knowledge about how to use it, then going into the Excel table and that's it. In reality, and this is uh, coming in the next slides, we nevertheless had a few reasons to uh, create an additional uh, instrument here, CUT, so the calculation and assessment tool. And this is uh, nevertheless to put this whole thing into a more user-friendly structure. And um, so to avoid that, everybody has to go uh, back, jump back and forth uh, for uh, in. Um, including information that they have collected into the um, assessment. However, um, the I have to warn you, if you go into CUT without any preparation, without going through the manuals, or at least having a relatively good idea from what you got out of the ma uh, manuals, what you want to do. And if you have not uh, been through the training material, then at a certain stage, you might uh, have a problem here uh, in uh, filling in the right data, and then the uh, instrument becomes more uh, fluffy and less useful than in the end for the presentation. So. Please keep the uh, previous steps in mind. This instrument here, CUT, is an addition. It's a simplification for the user. All the information that um, is used in CUT came from the manuals, has been introduced here. And as Almundena said, uh, there are exactly for level ones. The uh, examples could also then be used in uh, level one, also in CUT. So there are different uh, connections. Please keep the whole picture in mind when going to cut. Another aspect uh, here is, of course, um, uh, cut is also a possibility uh, to upgrade the um, interaction between the user and the system itself. A little bit easier than uh, starting to revise uh, the manual and uh, the Excel table. So we hope that this is also a, an instrument where we can re uh, react relatively fast to questions and demands from the users. Last but not least, uh, and for everybody who has used CUT already, the first thing is you try to enter the system and the system is asking data from you. No? First of all, your profession, the country where uh, you're working or where the project is, and the building type. We are not doing this for the fun of collecting data. What we are trying to do here is uh, to see, okay, who is interested uh, in uh, levels, keeping in mind that we are trying to uh, provide an easy instrument uh, for um, uh, users. We want to see in which countries, which professions are actually um, uh, trying to use this instrument and to see then in particular if we miss somebody, why is there a gap? No? So is the instrument not good enough? Do we have to do something to improve so that we can a little bit streamline our own evaluation then? Uh, so this information is really to help us producing a better uh, product for you than in the end. Next slide, please. Um, the general idea here is, um, uh, as I said, a simplified version of what you have heard uh, before. So you are using what you have, um, uh, the whole concept that has been developed in the GRC. Uh, you can uh, get a summary of uh, your results, which gives you a better overview, also vis-a-vis -vis, uh, your customers, your colleagues, when you have to discuss uh, certain possibilities, certain options, how to uh, improve uh, the performance, or making the decision of an, if an improvement is actually um, uh, the, the way to move forward. Um, then the uh, instrument allows you really to move from one uh, level as uh, to the next one. As Josefina said, I mean, we uh, give you a lot of flexibility. This flexibility is reflected in uh, CAT because it allows you to go, um, use for different indicators, different uh, levels of complexity, what you can provide an in information, what you want to provide for information. Last but not least, this data will be available for some time, so um, it is also a kind of library. However, we have put a deadline here that is two years. After two years, we will delete the information. However, this doesn't mean that the moment you start, the clock is ticking and from this moment on um, you're losing time. It's actually when you press the last uh, button here and then you do nothing, the uh, clock starts ticking. If within the two years you do something in addition, even pressing, uh, changing one indicator and then changing it back, 
it would still remain in the system. But we want to avoid that we, of course, create here a graveyard for data that in the end nobody needs any longer. So please be aware we keep this information for some time, but at a certain time we are also cleaning up our system. On the next slides, um, I give you a little bit the idea of what has happened in the meantime. So since CAT was um, made live uh, at the beginning of these years, uh, this year we have uh, 400 people, more than 400 people that have actually registered in CAT and we see this was why I said uh, we are collecting this data in to see what target groups we are meeting, uh, we are reaching. We are talking mostly about designers and we are talking here in this specific case. There are more countries, of course, involved, but uh, the front runners are the uh, four mentioned here. For water, most likely in Spain, even a, a more urgent business than in uh, Belgium and in Germany. So hopefully there are enough um, and a lot of um, users or potential users from Spain here. This is um, also when I present now cut, also looking into water consumption. This is one of the instruments that we can provide. On the next slide, I will come back a little bit to uh, what Shane has uh, presented to you. So the baseline of uh, the, the consumption rates, the usage factor, and then the calculation, what does this mean as a daily consumption per uh, occupant? These elements are all included in uh, the um, levels, uh, sorry, in levels cut. Uh, you will see it up to a certain extent then in the slides when I show you level two, where it's um, most of this information, most of this detailed information is coming back. But you will also see in comparison that uh, the actual information is nevertheless more limited because a lot of what you see here as in the different uh, columns is hidden within the system already. So. We are not trying to confuse somebody with a lot of data uh, on the screen of cut. It should be relatively easy to uh, follow uh, through the system. So having said that, we are going into cuts on the next slide. Still the basic principle, as I said before, um, when you uh, select uh, the project, when you select the life cycle uh, stage, when you choose the indicators and the levels, please keep in mind that there are instruments uh, like the manuals, like uh, the um, uh, e-learning tools to help you make this decision before you actually go into levels which on the next slides we will start. So I'm not uh, going here into an interactive tool because it would take way too much time to go into every single um, aspect here, but this is where the whole thing starts. And on the next slides, um, this is an important thing. We have mentioned it before, Josefina said already, we have um, uh, the e-learning tools in six languages. The same goes for the user manual here for CAT. So we are not talking about the GRC. There is a special user manual for CAT that you can use. Again, for the time being in six languages, we are upgrading this step by step and finally to have all the official languages of the European Union in the system itself. Next slide, please. We are going to, uh, to uh, entering the system as such. So some of the information, as you can see here, you create a project, you create um, the location, which means the climate zone. You go to uh, the typology of, um, of the building, the usage and some other additional information. As you can see, see here on the screen, it's like on nearly every other database that you get. You get something with a star in it that is something you should fill in because that um, gives a, a better idea um, uh, what is happening. And in particular, when you click, for example, in location and climate with Austria, it gives you, um, um, uh, you can then go to the uh, box with the climate zone. You have this eye here for information. If you move on this, you get some uh, background information already what these different zones are and which regions are actually covered by these zones. So we are, uh, the system is already helping you here to make decisions um, to give you choices that you could use. You don't have to use them, but it's a possibility here to simplify uh, your work and you don't have automatically to go back to uh, the manual documents from uh, the GRC to find out what uh, should I put into these boxes. So in some cases we have provided this information from the GRC documents already here, but a little bit more hidden because some people might be much faster in doing this on their own. On the next slide, uh, 
we are going to the building elements. Um, as you can see, in reality, a building is much more complex than uh, the parts that we have selected here. Again, based on uh, the work that has been done previously uh, in the GRC. Uh, nevertheless, we think that these are the most important ones where you can provide information and keeping in mind, again, micro enterprises. We don't want to create extremely complex system that's practically somebody in a micro enterprise can no longer do because it's way too uh, time consuming to uh, collect this data. We are focusing on a few elements. And if we then go to the next slide, you will see here uh, highlighted we are going for the sanitary systems as the one element that we are looking for in the case of water consumption. Um, moving to level one here. So we have here the macro objectives, you have the user stage on the next slide uh, highlighted again. Um, we are going the first step to level one and the next step I will show you level two what kind of information what is the format what should be uh, filled in and then to level three going to the next slide we will see what we will find in level one so you actually see a lot of boxes uh, and uh, as it was already mentioned in the previous presentations this is more or less a qualitative approach so it's a kind of tick box where you provide information uh, in the e-learning um, tools, as already presented, there are already some uh, elements, some um, paragraphs that you might use, that you might have to adapt for your project, but you can fill it in. I would recommend that you stick to a certain um, reporting format so that you provide more or less the same level of information, because when you start with the next project, Learning is easier if you can then easily refer to it. Therefore, also these um, examples in the e-learning instruments are quite helpful because they can help you to um, um, create a more common approach that you don't have to invent the wheel again and again for uh, the type of information that you want to create um, put in there. So level one is the fact that you are providing some basic information and um, you make sure for yourself and for your customers that certain elements have been taken into account and how they have been taken account, but they remain qualitative as such. It's just a description. On the next slide, we go a step further. Now we are coming to level two and level two is actually the most um, complex one in uh, for the indicator for uh, water consumption, because here we are going into uh, different elements. You remember the slide before um, uh, that has shown practically what is coming from the Excel table. Here you have the um, whole thing again, partly with information that um, you have to provide again uh, obligatorily. So there you have the, uh, at the beginning the river basin uh, annual rainfall. These are informations that are relatively easy to um, uh, get. Then you go to um, the different uh, elements of your sanitary appliances that you uh, take into account. You don't have to take all of them into account. On the right uh, part of the table, you have these uh, pencils, so you can also delete some of these elements or you put a zero there. And you have possibilities here, as Shane mentioned, the possibility of gray water, rainwater to be uh, used. You can add this in um, your assumption here. On the next slide, we are going to the second part of the screen. You don't see everything right from the beginning, but this is still level two. Um, here I show uh, you can see uh, quite easily you can have one scenario. This is the one that you have filled in. You can add two additional scenarios and compare them. So there you can see, OK, what are the um, gains? What are the possibilities? Of course, normally you connect it with a lot of other factors, not just the water consumption itself, but it helps uh, to get a better overview and it helps to argue with, for example, uh, the building owner, the building management to see what could be done and what is the um, preferred option here. One thing that I would like to raise from all the time, there is a save button and whenever you uh, work for the system, save as often as possible because the moment you leave this page to go to the next indicator, to go to the next um, or going back, if you haven't saved it, it's gone. So please, uh, if you want not to lose a lot of time, save as often as possible. Then you can uh, complete it, then you run the assessment 
And if you then find out, okay, actually, I still want to do some changes here, you can still edit this information. So it's not something that is then written in stone. You have the possibilities, of course, to, to change and to upgrade whenever necessary. Next slide, please. This is now how you um, get to um, uh, the results. Um, up to a certain extent, you, uh, we are reducing it here to the water consumption, the potable um, water and uh, the other. In this case, you see, okay, that's maybe not um, uh, uh, very uh, uh, high variation. We are talking about non-potable um, waters in this specific scenario. Uh, here you see also we have a baseline scenario. So this is what you get out of uh, this information. Then, as I mentioned before, you can add into this uh, calculation two more scenarios. Sli uh, next slide, please. And um, sorry, another one. <laughs> and you can then compare already here on this page. And this is the page where you can look into it. This is the page uh, where the consumer can actually check this. You can uh, see um, what um, changes you can make and you want to make here. This is level two. As I said, quite a lot. We are going for every single uh, element for water consumption in the uh, building that we have defined in our uh, levels approach. Now on level three, we are going one step further. It looks much uh, uh, less informative, but actually this is when we go from the basic consumption of level one, are we doing something and what are we doing? to a calculated version where we say, okay, this is what we do actually in the design phase and what we expect uh, to be the outcome. And here in level three, we are actually going to the point, okay, what is um, the result? Here right now, you don't see anything on the level two estimates. I have not taken this over, but this is exactly then the comparison. You have an estimate if you want to do it on level two, then you go on level three and you see, okay, have we achieved what we wanted to achieve or are the actual measured um, uh, uh, consumption is higher or lower than what we have planned to do? If it's lower, of course, it's not a bad uh, thing, no? but if it's higher, then okay, where were the, uh, where were the problems or what was uh, wrong in the previous assumption that uh, could or could not be corrected? So this is uh, more the point on, for the building management. It's also more the point for the designers when they have actually um, um, finished their design, when it uh, is finally operational, this building, uh, to see, okay, how realistic were our assumptions. Of course, the problem is, in particular with water consumption, we are talking about occupant behavior. A lot of things can go uh, quite different, but exactly here and um, when uh, keeping in mind the previous slides where we had also the area where you can uh, get water for rainwater, for gray water, um, additional sources, uh, you see that there's a lot of information that you can actually use to um, play around and to improve um, the efficiency of your system and then to, um, to um, for, for maybe for this project or the next project to see how to, to improve in general the design of it. So level three is mostly a reality check uh, to improve uh, future designs or to improve the existing um, uh, system by making corrections. Uh, this is de facto the system. On the next slide, um, we are going for the point, okay, that's it for the time being. As Josefina already said, uh, we want to keep it as, show, uh, as stable as possible for a certain period. On one hand, because it allows that somebody can learn it and actually use it. The second thing is, even if we have never expected Corona to happen, uh, I mean, everybody else in the uh, on this continent and on this planet is busy with a complete different issue. Um, um, mostly economic survival. So the chances that they can immediately work with levels and, and spend a lot of time on this right now is rather limited. So it will stay stable for some time. So, but this is the chance actually exactly for all of you to say, if you I'm working with it and if I have a question, 
you come please back to us. We really want to make this system as user friendly and as practical as possible. And if you have a question, if you have a problem here, please let us know. There are never stupid questions. There are only stupid answers and we try to avoid them. So please um, make us aware that something is working or something is not working. We tried our best to create a useful tool in this, but of course it's completely different what we want to do and what you as the practical user in the field can actually do with this. So for this, my main message here is please use CATS with all the information you have got before. Be critical about it and we try our best to do um, the improvements um, as fast as possible. Again, if there are big improvements, then it takes uh, more time, but um, uh, there is a possibility to, to ask um, our technical supports um, for help, either for guidance or for um, uh, the possibility then maybe in future to, to change and to improve this product. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manfred, for this excellent presentation. So uh, bar raised high, but definitely you, you managed to even supersede that. So very good. Thank you very much, Manfred. If um, I could also ask Al uh, Modena to put her camera back on. I also don't see you, Manfred, at the moment, but that might just be a technical point on my end. Um, I'm sure you have your camera on. Ah, there you are. Perfect. There, all, all there. Very good, because we now have a bit of time to go into um, questions um, from the audience. Um, but I would just like to maybe um, ask a first question also to uh, Almudena as uh, we were listening to your um, to your presentation on the e-learning. Um, is there a specific path to follow in e-learning or can I go at random? Uh, we have included in the in the e-learning um, webpage that uh, our recommended learning path related to the priorities that you that the user may have in in their projects. But uh, as uh, levels is very flexible and and you can decide in the, in the beginning uh, which is the best way to integrate whatever you prefer in, in your project. Uh, you can pick and choose. Uh, it is always recommended as. Uh, Josefina says in the beginning to start with the levels web page where where everything is uh, there is a very good introduction the contest uh, how it works and and everything and then in the e-learning uh, uh, web page there is an introductory module and uh, that it, it also um, helps you to understand which which could be the project plan uh, when you start with using levels and, and give different instructions and you can see overall the different indicators so you can choose and uh, once you have like a, an overall pers perspective of what is level or what is the, the opportunities to incorporate concepts of sustainability in your projects then you can you can start with the different modules and per per macro objective. Yeah. And uh, maybe just a follow up because we also heard from Manfred that um, moving into CAT right away is a, maybe a bit of a challenge. How is that about the, the e-learning material? Do you do users have to read the manuals first? So the manuals presented by Shane or or not? What do you recommend? Uh, we recommend to uh, our learning path in our um, brain is to start with the with the levels website then start with the e-learning before of the manuals just to uh, get in um, more familiar with levels and what it means and and these things and with this introductory module and then with the different um, macro objective modules and then at the same time or uh, when you finish this uh, one module you can read in 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 more detail the, the user manuals because it has more detailed information. Yeah. We we try to do a, a user friendly and, and synthesize um, learning because um, we need to adjust uh, also to the um, to the typical hours of an e-learning because levels could be um, is is a very strong tool and and we need to to synthesize a, a little bit yeah. Okay. And maybe a final point from my uh, from my side. Um, we have quite some practitioners also in the audience. Is there a specific um, section or part of the e-learning which you think is most practical? Yes, 
I think that in, in all the all the modules are structured at the same um, different topics, and at the end of each module, we we have incorporated the, the case study, but also the quizzes to self self uh, knowledge uh, self assessment your knowledge, and this case study could give you a very good example of the how to implement in a reality uh, the different indicators and the different uh, levels. Perfect. Yes. Thank you for that advice. So also for you out there who have not yet looked at the e-learning material, but would love to, here's maybe a little hint on where to find the most practical things. And also maybe the, I think a very strong recommendation for, from Amodena that maybe start with a website, then go into e-learning. And if you want further details, then look at the user manual. So thank you for taking us through this little um, like journey that you also had designed there. Um, and then maybe Manfred, linking it to yours, we've heard from Amodena that there is obviously also links to the other, let's say the, the suite of things that you have uh, for, for levels, but how is the link of the CAT um, with other IT tools? Um, and I'm specifically wondering about the building logbook uh, or the BI, I am sorry, the, um, the building information modeling. I always have to note that down. Um, is there a link and what, if so, what is it? Um, for the time being, we are not that far. No? So uh, on one hand, let's be assured that we have uh, made certain that we are not doing something different than the building logbook. Good. But the perk, a point where we can say you can easily transport the data that you have now in uh, levels cut into another uh, IT tool, this is still something um, that uh, needs more work to be done. It also depends, let's see, on, on how this tool is received and where do we have to make changes then in the end, no? because then the interactions and the links to, to other systems are getting more complicated. But it's a little bit like the question before of the link with different policies and regulations. No? It's the same thing here. We avoid that you have to do it once in levels, then another time under the building logbook, then another time under um, um, any other uh, IT tool in the commission in particular now. So the main idea is really to link all of these together. Since all of these instruments are still in a relatively early phase of their uh, development, it's the good news is time for, um, uh, there are a lot of flexibility still there, so that's uh, easier to adapt. The bad news is none of them is really at the stage right now where you can easily move one from the other. No? But this is definitely uh, a goal here. No? So this is, uh, level should not, uh, cut should not stand isolated. Level should not stand isolated, cut shouldn't stand isolated either. No? Absolutely. So, of course, I mean, first get everything right and settled and, of course, collect the feedback and then look into integration, um, which is an ambition, right? Uh, but you need to have the basics first um, before you, you reach out and try to uh, link it to others. Um, there was also a question in the chat from uh, Vincent um, Briard, I think that's the name. Um, is the library of um, assessments access accessible to everyone or by everyone or is it in read only mode? Uh, for the time being, it's in read-only modes. Um, the idea behind it, why we are not work, uh, uh, moving to a PDF file that you print out and you move around, was that uh, in particular when it comes to design and uh, the building management, it's also playing around a little bit with the information. So where can I make changes? So we considered levels at that stage much more of an interactive tool where you actually try to um, find better solutions with the customer, with your colleagues as such. So it's a read-only uh, instrument right now. If we find out with the feedback that we receive, okay, that was a good assumption, but the wrong one, uh, then we have to, to um, uh, also to think about uh, other ways of presentation. But for the time being, um, we thought that uh, practically whoever is using levels and whoever is presenting these results is mostly working with the laptop and um, putting it in front of everybody and uh, working on this directly. Thank you. And you were just pointing to it uh, now and also, of course, already in your presentation. So the users, right, because this is supposed to be a very um, user friendly, user centric um, tool. And you mentioned in your presentation a specific focus on SME, SMEs and micro enterprises, which are quite common in the construction sector, right? Um, uh, do you have a specific way of one, how you want to reach them? Because it's it's a particular way of communication, right, and particular issues that they're facing. How do you how do you plan on doing that? Um, 
that will be uh, one of the challenges of the future. I mean, one of the things is exactly the data that we get now. So at the moment, somebody is creating their own accounts here. I mean, for the designers, we can assume that quite uh, the majority, the absolute majority is small and medium enterprises and micro enterprises. No? For the construction companies, it could be a little bit different. The same goes for building management. No? Um, so uh, for the time being, we are going more for the general percentage, seeing what is the feedback as such, the interest in, in the system, and uh, then uh, trying then to reach out if we identify, for example, that 90% are designers. No? Then the question is, where on earth are the others? I mean, if the number is very high anyway, then maybe it's uh, still a good percentage. No? But uh, this is then something where we then have to, to look a little bit closer. Uh, this we do then via the usual um, usual um, routes. So we go to the federations. We try to get feedback um, at EU and national level to see what has actually happened here. And uh, using also these information channels then to raise awareness and to ask for um, information uh, why these things have not happened. It's a tricky thing. I mean, that's uh, always the point at the EU level to reach really micro enterprises is already difficult at the national level for authorities and and actors here for us it's even worse no? so yeah. therefore it's exactly then the point um uh that uh, we hope that the presentation of levels as such as an SME and micro enterprise friendly tool is the first step. If you find out then with the um, assessment of uh, the evaluation of uh, the actors actually involved in in cuts, then we can see also where we have to to look a little bit closer. Perfect. Thank you so much, Manfred. Uh, and also thank you, Amodena, for, for being available for these questions um, to shed a bit more light after your great presentations. I want to thank you at this point. Um, maybe also the two of you, if you could have a look at the chat and see if there is still a question addressed to you that you might want to get back to. We still have a few minutes in left in this webinar. That would be great. But for the moment, thank you so much for your presentations and for answering the questions. Uh, dear participants, this means that we're almost at the end of today's webinar. We are just going to wrap up uh, today's event. Uh, and on, for that purpose, it, it would be really great if Josefina, you could join us again on camera, because I would be really interested to hear what your takeaways are for today. Or what are the takeaways, of course, that you want participants um, to take with them? Yes, thank you. Uh, it's been quite an intense uh, webinar, hasn't it? With lots of information, but um, <laughs> I think that we have been able to show that there are lots of different ways of of approaching levels, depending on your, can I say, your level of, of, of knowledge in, in the area in, in general. And we have really for the last, what, one and a half year, we've been working hard to, to prepare these different kinds of materials. Uh, so that it could be as accessible to as many people as possible. And I hope that um, the participants today have got a sense of that as well. Um, I would like to, to start by reminding you all of the e email that uh, Katharina mentioned at the very beginning that you will be receiving uh, in, I don't know if it is later on today or in just a few days, after the weekend, uh, where you will find also the link to the new video and to the new fact sheets, which are ex exactly about what we have talked about here today, and that you take the opportunity to spread these to, to your networks as well. Um, we have currently uh, over 600 users of the of the e-learning and over 400 users of CAT, uh, which I think is great considering that we have uh, very recently I launched these two initiatives, but we want to see it increase even more. So please try it out and spread the news in your networks. Um, I saw a question actually, and I think it's important to say, I saw the question, yeah, I would like to use this, but I don't manage to, to convince my, my immediate building surrounding to go for it. And I just would like to say, and as I mentioned before also, levels already last year started to have an impact on, on different kinds of policy initiatives. It will continue to do so also in this year's work on sustainable finance, for example, but also in others. Um, so if if for no other reason uh, to get to prepare yourselves for coming um, policy initiatives, um, I think it is great to start looking at these different um, 
you know, the introduction, the e-learning, uh, start glancing through the user manuals so that you understand what it is and maybe pick up uh, starting to use at level one at least so that you you know what's what it is, what it is about, because this is coming um, for the time being on a voluntary basis, but we see this being picked up also in policy. Um, finally, I would like to stress that there will be more webinars uh, on levels coming up. Uh, we are planning uh, a whole suite of them for the coming year um, from now on. Uh, one that we know of already in terms of timing is one which will come in early October, uh, which will sit under the EU Regions Week, where we will have a session specifically dedicated towards uh, cities and, and local and regional authorities. So that's already uh, in the making, but there will be uh, a, a number of others as well. So please stay tuned for that. Um, we would, of course, also, as we're going to do more of those webinars, we would love to have your feedback on this one so that we can, as, as best as possible, uh, prepare ourselves for, for future sessions. So please give us feedback as well. Um, and with that, I would just like to thank uh, the, the participants for having stayed with us. I see that there are more or less the same numbers as when we started, so that's a great uh, uh, great recognition, I think, uh, and, and uh, great Katharina for having kept us together and on time. Uh, so, yeah, thanks everyone for having joined and I uh, hope to see you very soon. And yeah, here you see the Levels website as well. And of course, how to, to join the, the LinkedIn group where, um, where you will find more information also about when coming webinars are, are being planned. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Josefina, for uh, this summary and takeaway of today's webinar. Um, as Josefina said, a big thank you goes to you as participants, but also to our great speakers, including Josefina, but also, of course, also including Shane and Modena and Manfred. Uh, with their presentations, they've given you uh, quite something at hand to use. Um, if you are interested in levels, if you maybe have already started experimenting with it, but we're not maybe completely sure yet on what the potential is, but also what what's in the details, right? Um, so please um, have a look at these presentations again. You can because early next week you will get a, uh, an email with, as uh, Josephine said, links to the new publications of the fact sheets, links to the new video, the PowerPoint presentations of today, as well as a little um, as a link to a little uh, feedback survey that we would like you to complete. So next week, early next week, uh, this big present will arrive in your email inbox uh, where you have all of the information of today, plus additional brand new information in terms of the videos and the publications. So please watch out for that. And uh, in that case, of course, also then spread the information that you receive, particularly the video and the publications in your network. Uh, as uh, Josephina mentioned, there is a great way to stay connected, which is the LinkedIn group. You can see the link on the slide, but it will also be mentioned again in the email that you receive early next week. So do connect because then you stay up to date and with the newest developments, uh, including upcoming webinars, but also other uh, publications and the like. So do connect and um, in that way, it's easier to see each other back soon into the future. So thank you very much for today's event. Thank you also to the team behind this. There is a great team um, making these kind of events possible. Um, and I think it's also a big thank you to them. A big round of applause because it is a lot of work in the background. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for participating today. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. But for the moment, enjoy your Friday and, of course, also the weekend to come. Thank you so much and see you soon.